Hey everyone, it's Marco here from the Thema team and today's video is going to be all about the Zupa widget conditionals that you currently see in most of the new themes included within Thema. Now this video is still going to be very basic as there's still going to be more of these videos to come if you guys really enjoy it. So without any further ado, let us begin with today's new video. Great, so the reason why I created this video and probably a few more after this is that Zupa Widget is pretty much seen in almost all of the new themes within Thema. As you can tell, this one right here titled Reflect Blue has quite a few widgets and probably 90% of this is Zupa Widgets. So it is quite important and there's still so much that you can do within Zupa Widget. A lot of people just think that, well, I can just add a time and a date and a little bit of text and that's pretty much it. Well, it doesn't stop there as Zupa Widget has pretty much endless possibilities and what sets it apart amongst other things from the other customization widgets that you currently see on the Google Play Store is its conditionals. Now if you have a closer look at this little widget box here that I created, you can see that it's got some interesting information that can change dynamically. Now what I mean by that, well you can see straight away that my Wi-Fi is connected, I'm currently charging my phone and my next appointment or my, my next agenda is the screen of the day which is today, not tomorrow or any other day at four o'clock and also I've got an unread email that I still need to catch up on. So what do I mean by dynamic? Well let's just see if I unplug my phone right now that's going to change to get a charge because say if my battery was below say 15 or 12 percent then I can have whatever text that I want even it doesn't have to be get a charge it can be whatever you want and same goes for the rest of these if I disconnect my wi-fi it'll then show me disconnected just like that. And of course, if I say have an agenda for the following day, it'll then say tomorrow at four o'clock or whatever other time it is. And of course, with this little email icon, say if I wanna go open up my email and say read what this message is, and then once I've read the email, that icon will then disappear. So if you'd like to know how to recreate a few of these conditionals, then let us begin with today's video tutorial. Great, so first up, what do you need in order to create this? Well, that's pretty much just Thema Zupa Widget. You're also welcome to do this on Zupa Widget or Zupa Widget Pro, but seeing as this is a Thema video, then we're gonna stick with the Thema Zupa Widget because of course it comes built in. So if you'd like to create a blank Zupa Widget, it's extremely easy to do. You simply have to hold down on the home screen, select widgets, and you wanna scroll down a bit to the one here called Thema Zupa Widget. You wanna hold down on it, not just tap it, and drag it onto the home screen wherever you want. And from here, you can resize it till your heart's content. Now I'm gonna tap away now, where I can then select that hand and this will bring up the Zupa widget configuration. And once it's open, you've got a few options to choose from here. I'm just gonna be selecting empty because I'm gonna create one from scratch. Now, if you looked at the complete guide to Zupa widget, I do explain pretty much what this all means, but we're gonna be jumping straight into the layout as I'm just gonna be focusing on the conditionals for this video. So I'm just gonna select the little plus button there to add in a new module, and I'm gonna be selecting rich text because it's a lot more dynamic and easier to edit than just the plain old text. For example, you can change the color, the sizing, make it bold, etc. So if I scroll a bit down, I wanna to get to the text header here and look for the one here titled Edit Text Manually as this is where all the fun happens. Now, Zupa does give you a few predefined options to choose from here, and they are extremely helpful. As you can see, the default one here is the current time. And of course, if you wanna remove that, you just need to select this text box here, and then just remove it like that. Now, once it's done, it's completely blank. This is where we can start adding in our conditionals. Now, if we have a look here, we've got a few to choose from, for example, our battery, our date, our calendar, and the list goes on, but the one that we are worried about today is the one here titled conditionals. Now they're called conditionals because it comes with certain conditions that need to be followed in order to display whatever you want in this text field. And as you can see, it does come with four to choose from here, but these are just purely examples and they get a lot more complicated than this, but this is just a good platform just in case you have never used these conditionals before. So the first one here that we can see is write Z only if X is smaller than Y. Now that might sound a bit complicated and the code here might look like something from another planet, but in essence, it's extremely easy to follow once you get used to it. As you can see, it says smaller than, denoted by that little crocodile symbol. I'm not too sure how you want to call it, but it's just that arrow pointing to the left. Of course, there are a few more options to choose from. For example, greater than, equal to, non-equal to, greater than or equal to, smaller than, non-equal to, as well as and and or. And we'll get to those a bit later. 
But for now, we'll just start off with this first one. And if we select it, it'll then bring up the code just like that. And as you can tell, nothing is showing right now as it doesn't really make sense because it has to follow certain rules. Now, of course, this doesn't really make sense x smaller than y it has to be in a numeric format so you can say for example uh, 7 is less than 8 and how would we go about this well let's have a look i'm going to first remove this x letter like that so that it has now disappeared and as you can see we've still got available fields to choose from here so what i'm going to look for is the one for battery and this is quite easy just in case you can't remember for example the battery level what it is you can just select it straight off here and it's a lot easier to work with. So what I want to do is for this code to tell me that if my battery level is less than 12%, then I must charge my phone. So what I want to do is now that I've removed that X, I want to put in my battery level. Remember, you want it to be numeric. So I'm going to select it like that. And please take note of the pound signs or the hashtag signs, whatever you want to call them. But these symbols are very important later on when you're creating very complex lines of code and you might forget one or two of those. So always remember you want to keep available fields in between these pound signs, otherwise it'll not work at all. Great, so now we want to say that, well, our battery level is less than Y. So we want to put in a numeric value for Y. Now what you can do is make it 12, but of course my battery is not at 12, so I can just give you an example. Say if I say 70 right now, and as you can see, our code is now finally producing an output, which is exactly what we want. Now, of course, Z or Z makes no sense at all. What does that actually mean? Well, what we can say is that, say for example, our battery level is less than 70%, we can now put in whatever text that we want and you can now put in say charge your phone or whatever other text that you would like so what does this actually mean this is break it down once again this means that if my battery level is less than a certain number i just put 70 right now because my battery level is less than 70 then it's going to output whatever text that i've put in after that question mark always remember to keep your code in between the two dollar symbols like that otherwise it'll just not work at all as this helps separate the different code that you would want to input here and then you have your first conditional now it's pretty simple it's very easy to understand it's not too complex and it's very helpful if you just want to try out your different conditionals this would be a good place to start but of course we do want to make it slightly more complicated so let's kick it up a notch as you can see this is still relating to my battery but it is slightly more complex so let's break it down if we have a look at this first line of code you can see that it's got b stat n and well we're not too sure what that means so let's have a look so if we have a look in our available fields and look for the one here for battery because it's b stat we can see that the one here is for our battery status now it is displayed in numerical values which is exactly what we want so what it says here is that for two that means that your battery status is charging or you charging your phone so what that means is that if your battery status equals two in other words your phone is charging then it'll display charging however what if it's not charging and your battery level is less than a certain percentage well that's what the next line of code is for as you can see here it states that if your battery status is not equal to two remember it's got that exclamation mark equals to two that means not equal to two and remember the and symbols is the two ampersand symbols your battery level is less than or equal to 60 then you want it to output get a charger let me break that down to you once again if our battery status is equal to two in other words our battery status is charging or our phone is charging then you want it to output charging however if your battery status is not equal to 2 and your battery level is below or equal to 60 then you want it to output get a charger and as you can see that's what it's currently displaying so we can always just test this out if I plug my phone in now for my charger you might just have to select the tick go back out of it and then go back into it you can now see that it's displaying the top line of code here because my battery status is now charging so it's outputting the charging text now, of course, you don't want to have spaces here. You, you always want to make it in one line. And that's pretty much just to prevent your text from jumping all over the place. So if we select the tick now, you can now see that my phone is charging. But of course, if I unplug it, it'll then say get a charger. So once you understand the basics of these conditionals, it gets a lot easier because a lot of them are pretty much the same thing, checking one or the other and displaying the outputs accordingly. So let's have a look with this Wi-Fi one. As you can see, it's currently disconnected. So let's see what I did there. If I open up my disconnected or well, my rich text module here, 
and go into edit text manually you can see a new symbol here which is the colon symbol and this whole format looks slightly different so this line is still very basic but it's just to help the extreme beginners out there just to understand what is what when it comes to conditionals so having a look here we can see that it's the numerical wi-fi state then you can just go into the network here, scroll a bit down, and it explains what NW state actually is. As you can see here, it displays that the Wi-Fi state, which is a numerical value, to be 0, 1, or 2. Now I'm not going to worry about the 0 or the 1, I'm just going to be worried about the 2. So what I wanted to display is that if it's not connected, I wanted to display disconnected. And this is actually the second line of our conditionals, which states that write Z if X is different than Y, otherwise write W. A Z value that is now disconnected and of course the W which is Wi-Fi connected. So let's break it down. What this means is that if my Wi-Fi state is different to what I have over here, then I wanted to display disconnected. Otherwise, I always wanted to display Wi-Fi connected. So that means that if my Wi-Fi state is not equal to 2, I wanted to display disconnected. Otherwise, it'll always display Wi-Fi connected. So always remember that if you put in a colon, that means that it checks one or the other and displays the output accordingly. And as always, also don't forget to keep in your field in between those two pound signs, as well as the entire line of code between your two dollar symbols. Another example of this is for my email icon that is now obviously not there because I don't have an email notification. So exactly the same method, I'm gonna go into edit my text manually. And as you can see, it's such a short line of code, it's so easy to put into practice. So breaking it down, it means that if my email inbox, which is denoted by SUG, is less than one, then I wanted to display blank, or pretty much I don't want it to display anything. Else, it must always display K. Now, what is K? And if you've been watching these Thema videos, you may remember that you can replace font letters with actual icons. So that's exactly what I've done here. If I go scroll down into my text fonts family, I've replaced it with the Thema icons, which as you should remember, are the ones that look similar to this, and those represent different letters of the alphabet. Now you can of course just make this a simple bitmap image, but the problem with that is that if you want to make it bigger or smaller, there can be some quality issues. And of course, you can't change the color or anything else like that. So we always recommend using one of those glyph icons that come with the fonts folder. So as you can see, there is a lot more to Zooper Widget than meets the eye. And there are countless possibilities for you to add different information onto your Android home screen. Do not worry, I've provided everything that I've just told you in this video in the description below, as well as how to get this today agenda to display correctly. If you still have questions, I do recommend checking out the Thema Zooper Widget XDA forum. There's a lot of people there that are very willing to help you out and they truly know what they're talking about on those forums. So I definitely recommend that you go try out some of the available widgets as well as the questions and answers if you're still a bit confused. Do not worry, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up as well as to please subscribe to the My Color Screen channel. And also let us know in the comment section below what else you'd like to see on this video. For example, the advanced parameters, adding in your own status bar or adding in different images, anything that you want. Just leave them in the comment section below and we'll try our best to create a video for the next time around. So other than that, it's Marco here from the Thema team. And as always, don't stop customizing.